Joni Mitchell's album Court and Spark, right now on States and Kingdoms. So this is the second Joni Mitchell album that we've discussed right. so far on the channel. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. Am I wrong? No. Okay. This was the first Joni Mitchell album I listened to. Me too. Court Spark. Osmosis. Mom loved this album. I think she said, you know, give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. And I got it. I got the CD. She recommended it. You could say that. In words, yeah. Not what I what I said. So would you say you're indebted to her in every possible way? <laughs> you could say that. Good. Good. You could say that. Good. I did say that. You're supposed to say No, I'm not. I I like, I'm that. not even gonna do it. Um I I act I do. I love this album. Yeah. It's it's maybe my favorite of hers. It's the one I know best, aside from Hissing a Summer Wands, because you listen to it, and I just, I do know it. Yeah. Haven't listened to it on my own a lot. Because I said this before, I'm, I'm not a huge Joni Mitchell fan, like you are, for a number of reasons, uh, but one of them is it was your thing. I know. I mean, it's just one of those, you know, it, 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 like it was your thing, and it I, takes, I didn't it really... It takes effort to cross over into something that... well I mean I've listened to a number of things that you like and you still haven't listened to my Hank Williams records they don't need to know that no one needs to know that <laughs> she has not listened to my Hank Williams records <laughs> oh boy I also um, we talked about this we love we love this cover yeah I do it's, I, it's one of my favorite album covers yeah she, she, I mean, she has yeah. a couple of them that I, I really love yeah, and, uh, of course keep, she drew this, painted this. Painted, yeah. I keep forgetting because we have a whole, a uh, whole video slew. about oh, I say, we have a about of... Beatles album covers that I watched, and you know, <laughs> and you know, I, I keep forgetting to mention the album covers, particularly uh, Genesis. I know, but we, I this we, yeah, this um, I, yeah, I love this album cover. It's beautiful. It's my favorite because of course she's she's done other covers up for her albums and they're know? good and they're all good they she's, I, mean, she's, I, I like them too she's obviously I think an accomplished this artist they're not just schlocky in any really way really iconic album cover this one's beautiful and this looks like this is the one that looks most like like something I would have done me too I feel like this is my style this album's just my style <laughs> okay um yeah so the album starts with you guessed it. Court and Spark. <laughs> I didn't have to do my Karnak. <laughs> You're so old. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Court old, and Spark. Oldest millennial ever. Court and Spark is, is one of... Has some... I, I, I really love the lyrics on this. I love the words. I think it's some of my favorite lyrics of hers. Yeah. It's kind of general and yet personal. You know, it it's... It's a great, great song. I think, you know, from the beginning, the piano and the first phrases, you, you just kind of, you know that, one, you're intrigued. But, I mean, if you, if you were listening to the, these albums chronologically, I think you would know this is going to be different. It really sets the tone for the whole album mm -hmm. and, and just such a nice kind of rolling way. It really, you know, it yeah. builds. Of course, you listened to this first. So I did. I know. So... <sighs> I, I know, I'm like all out of order, and I didn't really think anything of it, you yeah. know, when I was listening to the different albums. But We usually tried to listen to the albums in chronological order. Oh, yeah, no, like if but I... But not yeah, in this case. If I, if I start something new. Well, I, I got, I'd gotten this and also Clouds, um, and I like this one better. Right. Well, of course. Of course you would. You're, you're the biggest Larry Carlton fan in the world. I know. No, no, you are. I mean, it's funny. I mean, because there. Okay, well, anyway, there is there is that that this crossover Steely Dan with that, yeah, West that sound. Coast sound, mm -hmm. you know, and it's and, got a tinge of country. It's got a tinge and Larry of Carlton jazz. And Larry is all over those things. So yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and his fan. Just say his playing is is. Oh yeah. Impeccable on this. It's awesome. All of the all of the instrument the instrumentation so, on this album is just help me. Great. Help you. Help me. I love this song. 
we were talking about this before, you know, this was a hit. This album yeah. was a hit. She's very successful. Very big hit. You know, and um, and yet you really didn't hear these things on rock radio. I've never heard Joni Mitchell played on the radio. But if you did, this should have been the song. Because this, this song is so catchy. It's just such an incredible hook. It's a brilliantly produced song. We can talk about that. No, I'll talk about it now. Yeah, talk about it. It's something you, I, you don't read a lot about, but J- Joni Mitchell, the singer, the guitar player, the songwriter, but the producer. Yeah. She, she produced these she albums. Did, yeah, this was, this was all her. Um, I don't think she gets the credit she deserves. Well, we've talked about that a long time, but, yeah, you know. We talk about that a long time. We talk about that a long time. I know. <laughs> I know I said it like that. Anyway. But we've talked about that for a while. But, yeah, the, as a producer, the, the her albums have a sonic scape that is just beautiful, yeah. wonderful. She She really just weaves all of these things together. And, I mean, I, I don't know how to say it without using the word texture. I know. No, texture's fine. That word doesn't bother but me. That fits. Nothing, it is just like from a craftsmanship perspective. There's nothing. I said that that word really slowly. Craftsmanship. Craftsmanship wise, mm. this is quite stunning. Yeah. Um, I mean, you really do hear so much nuance. I mean, it really is layered and just like on top of each other and flowing, and it's it's really it's ma- masterfully done. She's really she's the consummate artist. And that's why I think she's just so inspiring to, yeah. to so many people. And, you know, she has been. Even people that don't make music that sounds anything like this. That's right. That's right. Free Man in Paris is a, is a great song. It is. And it's, we're, we're saying, um, you know, when we were having the better conversation off camera. <laughs> that always happens. We were, we were saying the thing about, you know, how this is a first person song, but it's not about her. And I think... Not that she hadn't done it before, I'm not. I'm not sure, but yeah, this she's is telling the story on this of album. It's else. the first time she's <clears throat> telling a story about someone else. It's not. It's not personal. It's just business. Yeah. Sunny. Um. Yeah, and I think a lot of a lot of this album feels like like their characters that she's playing. Yeah. You it, know, she it, takes on a little bit of a persona. It's a mix. For the song. Yeah, it's you a can't real always mix. be quite sure. Yeah, and, there's always and a little bit of like truth in there. Like personal experience. Yeah, exactly. yeah, of course. Like any writer. Yeah. But yeah, it it works. It works. And it's just yeah, it's really intriguing. It, and it, I feel like that in, even goes to the next level on hissing of summer lawns. Where, yeah, like, she, there's, like, she a Full on narratives that she's telling on a lot of these those right. songs. People's parties always made me think of Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah, the lyrics do. I mean, the the crying and laughing. And also, a lot of, a lot of this album feels cinematic in a way. It does. It it does in a, an interesting way because because once she has a full backing band, then she really does use all of that to continue the story through the music. You know, the the music takes over the emotions of the song. Yeah. I mean, she it's it's a, it's a masterfully done thing. Because I mean, you know, so in a way, because every film composer can do that. And um, the best, well, the best rock composers or popular music composers can do it too. I was going to say that when we got to um, Down to You. Oh, yeah. Because that really does uh, seem that like that to me. It does seem mm-hmm. cinematic to me. Like a soundtrack. But yeah, um, people's parties and um, same situation... They're they're both they're both songs that they they could kind of have come before on for the roses or or even yeah. blue maybe but maybe but the music is significantly enough different yeah so I mean like the melody could have been you know the the yeah, way she the approaches the songs and but the, the production the music, and yeah, you know, every, yeah all of it is is done differently it's there's there's a lot yeah it's quite a difference it really is yeah and I didn't really notice before. Um, Car on a Hill. Car on a Hill is, and I like that song. Car, Car on a Hill, um, the, the, that, it's not really middle, but the sort of interlude that she does, I, I love that. I really love that. I guess that's... Well, that's something new on this startling. album, too, is, is there's a lot of vocal layering, and she's really playing with the different tracks that she can, you know, layering tracks and yeah. harmonizing with herself and doing really, really interesting stuff with the vocals. 
And if you listen to this on vinyl, and uh, if you have a decent system and whatnot, like good speakers, decent speakers, um, her voice is so like beautiful and rich. Yeah, you is. know, it, it really. I mean, she she really is just. It sounds like she's there. We said, we said yeah, that we said for, that for, we said that yeah, for his, so the last one because it really does. Yeah. Listening to the record, it really sounds like a live performance. She's like right in front of you. And everything is just the depth and the depth. <laughs> the depth and the warmth of it is just, it's yeah. all spread out and. Mm-hmm. It sounds great, yeah. It's cool. Down to you. Down to you. We've talked, on, uh, we've talked about that for a sec. Sorry. Well, I mean, that's what I was going to say about it, just that it, it does have a kind of soundtrack uh, quality in that the, the music continues to tell the sort of the story, you know, um, and uh, it's just so it's just so effective. I mean, I you know what the, the song is about, if it's about, you know, like a one night stand or, or ships passing in the night or something. But but happen. still, but still, <laughs> you know the 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 music. It's it's all just one. Uh, it's all moving in the same direction. It's all telling yeah. the same story, and it's 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 brilliant. It's really brilliant. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. Her piano work, and I'm assuming this that's her. I think it's her. Mm-hmm. Also brilliant. It's you know what can you say? Yeah, I know. That's why we hesitated to talk about Joni Mitchell for a long time because well, it's hard. It's difficult to talk about. Well, she's just she's really unique, and and you don't just keep being like it's so great, but it is. You know, it just so is boring. Just like this train, you're not super fond of this song. I like the refrain a lot. Um, it it's a song that doesn't really it just doesn't stick with me. For some reason, like I just can't. I just can't right now. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I just can't. I can't just recall it. I don't know. I don't know why. This doesn't doesn't stick with me. But I do like the refrain. I like it. I've I've always really liked that song. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I can tend to have that problem with certain things too. But I've listened to this album for so long. They're they're all in there. Mm. Um. Yeah. I. I I think, you know, it's it's not super complicated or anything. I think it's just a, it's a really nice song and No, I th- I like I feel like there's a little bit of like a playfulness to the lyrics and yeah, it just it, I just really like it. Yeah. I don't know why. I really don't. It is what it is. Raised on Robbery That's a is fun song. It it really recalls to me always like Chattanooga Choo Choo or something when it starts. It's got an old timey And then it goes into like a real, thing. you know, rock r&b-ish kind of thing um really unusual for her yeah really ever yeah not just you know but really good it's, and the, I think and the vocal is, I think layering on this song is like it's like right there mm-hmm. that like she's doing a lot of really cool stuff with the layered There's, vocals um, robbie robertson on guitar it's great on this album it gives you a nice kind of shot yeah it's like you know? super upbeat and yeah, it's a little different, but it fits perfectly. Yeah, it's good. Trouble Child. Looks this song looks forward to to hissing of summer lawns. I think uh, a lot and the 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 bass line and everything is is very catchy. I mean that is instant. Like you know you that just sticks with you immediately. Yeah, um, it's such a it's such a pleasant melody. I really I love the melody of this song. Yeah, and the whole thing, up. the music and the lyrics, all really evocative of, I don't know, I get a really clear picture. Um, like, lands, I don't know, I get a lot of landscapes from Joni Mitchell. I always get, like, landscapes. Hmm. That's me. You just see Saskatchewan in your head. That's <laughs> yeah, I, see. I just see Canada. Yeah, it says Canada. <laughs> Twisted is the last song. A jazz ditty. You know, I, I do like that she did this um, on this album, and then on the next one, she has a centerpiece. And and um, she does them so well. I actually do prefer them to the original album. Kendrick Lamar, Burton, Jimi Hendrix. I knew. Crap! I, knew you I went... forgot the last. What is there another one? Hog. It's... No, wait, was it? 
It's Alan and Rossi, Jimi Hendrix. No. Ross. Oh, hello there. Um, Hendrix and Ross. Lamar. Lambert. Lambert. Hendrix and Ross. Lambert. Mrs. Lamb. Now Lambert. I don't remember. You're doing. You're, Sorry. It doesn't One matter. Of, so it's it's basically like her favorite album. Yeah. Her favorite yeah. jazz album. And she does album. it very lovingly, but uh, really great. Yeah, it's really, a really great. It's a nice version. And um, it's a fun way to end the album. It Keep is. It light. Blue and For the Roses are fairly. Heavy, heavy duty somber fellows and she could always do that but i i do you know like the albums being a little bit more joyous mm-hmm. and uh you know bouncy journey. and and this is and it's just it's a lot of fun it's got that west coast sound it's got that california thing that mm-hmm. that you know a lot of those those uh, albums did it, it there's a definite for you there's a definite steely dan crossover and it's it's not just larry carlton but it's but uh, you know, there's there's a definite Danosity. jazziness. It's a great album. It is, and if you can get the vinyl, it's certainly worth it. Johnny Mitchell's albums on vinyl sound fantastic. It's yeah, it's the, at least stunning. I mean this this does, and this is this is um, well, this is not this is not recent. No, but, but it's so. it's a striking difference from the CD, which is also a striking difference from an MP3. So it's it's it sounds, absolutely it, but worth it. But it does. It sounds really good. The vinyl is really amazing. Yeah. I love it. Good. I love it. Well, there you have it, folks. Joni Mitchell's Court and Spark from 1974. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment below. Let us know what you think about Joni Mitchell, and make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more videos from States and Kingdoms, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Thanks so much. See you next time.